a lot of the series you'll be asked about the convergence for look very close to uh, a very nice looking series like a p series or or something like that but not quite the same which means you won't exactly be able to use um, the p series test or the integral test or something like that but um but just you know if they're so close you can you can really have a, a good idea of whether it's going to converge or diverge but we just need um we need some tests that will help link it to one of those more familiar tests if uh, if it's just not not quite there and just not not quite exactly um, the same. So one test that will help uh, relate your series to a more well-known series is something called the direct comparison test. And here, here's what it says. It says um, if you have a, a sequence of terms um, a sub n that's less than or equal to b sub n, so b sub n is always larger than whatever a sub n happens to be, then we can say something about the convergence of one of these guys based off of the convergence of, of the other. So let, let's read these and see if we can fill in the blank. Um, so if blank converges, then blank converges. So um, we have two two quantities here. We'll have uh, the sum of a sub n, that infinite series, versus the sum of the terms for, for b sub n. Now, let's, let's think about this. If we add up the terms of the larger series and it converges, then what does that say about the convergence of the smaller series because remember these are always smaller than b sub n well I, I think that means that that series would have to converge as well so we can say if the sum from n equals 1 to infinity or what have you of b sub n that infinite series if it converges you add up the larger terms and you get a finite quantity then surely if you add up the smaller terms you'll also get a finite quantity now how can this be helpful well, let's say, um, for instance, that, that your a sub n is really ugly. It, it almost looks like a, a geometric series or a p series or one of the more clean cut type of tests that you could use. Well, if you can bound it above by a nice series, um, 1 over n to the fifth or 1 over n to the third or you know something that's geometric or something that's a little nicer, and that, that you have an easier test to tell its convergence and it converges, then the um, smaller one converges no matter how ugly it is. Now take note of that relationship though. We cannot say the other way around. Uh, we could not say for instance that if you add up the smaller terms then that means that the sum of the larger terms have, has to converge. We can't say that because Maybe they're so big, maybe they diverge. It's not a, a bounding type of relationship. But we can say this. Look at the, the next line here. If blank diverges, then blank diverges. So what would the implication be there? Well, if you add up the terms of the smaller sequence and it blows up to infinity, or if it diverges, then surely if you add up the terms of the larger, or add up the larger terms, it'll diverge as well. So that, that's the implication in, in that direction. So um, you just have to be real careful with your inequalities when you're doing these direct comparison problems. But, um, but here, here's, here's just something to get our feet wet with an easy example. Um, the infinite series, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed plus 1. Um, now, b between me and you, we're, I think we're all fairly certain that, that this is going to converge. Um, how come? because it is so close to a p-series. If, if I just had only had 1 over n cubed, it would be done. And we all know that plus 1 is not going to make a huge difference in regards to the convergence. But we, uh, we have to be technical about it. We have to be rigorous about it. And, uh, and so we can't technically use the p-series because it's not really a p-series. So here's what we do. Uh, we'll, call this, uh, we'll call this, let's say, um, a sub n. And if we can find a b sub n that's larger than this guy, but yet it is quote unquote nice, um, and it that series converges, then we can say that this one converges, even though it's not exactly a p series. So let's compare that to one over n cubed. Um, one over n cubed plus one is what in relation to one over n cubed? Is it larger or is it smaller? Well, basic algebra says if your denominator is larger, 
then the whole fraction would be smaller. Okay, so we have this relationship here. Well now, if we um, add in the series notations, um, this um, statement would certainly be true as well. And since this one converges, the larger series converges, well then this one converges also by the direct comparison test. Okay, so you just have to show this inequality relationship here. Okay, um, here's another one. Uh, I threw in one that has a factorial because there's a, a common little trick you might need for these that have the factorials in there. Because when you start thinking about who you can bound that by, um, well, for, first of all, you think, okay, what do I think? Does it? Do I think it converges? Do I think it diverges? Well, um, n factorial grows very rapidly, which will make one over n factorial go to zero very fast. So I'm fairly confident that this will converge because these terms disappear, or they go away very quickly. So what I'm going to try to do is bound it uh, above, if I can, by somebody that's um, what we would call nice. Um, so now here's a little trick I'm just going to tell you. Um, here's the trick we use. Um, n factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. And until you get to n. That's the definition of n factorial. Now, if we're trying to um, make this fraction larger, then really the terms that we're comparing to n factorial need to be smaller, in fact. So check this out. Here's the trick. If you uh, would agree uh, 2 is less than or equal to 2, 2 is less than or equal to 3, 2 is less than or equal to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, um, and n. So now, uh, if you write that out as a product, this would be 2. But since I have multiple factors of 2, it will be raised to the n minus 1. Because I, I did leave off the, um, the initial term here just to make sure the inequality is, is correct. So since um, uh, n factorial is greater than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1, then 1 over n factorial will be less than 1 over 2 to the and minus one. Now why, why is that helpful? Well uh, we can basically use that to compare this series here um, to the series n equals zero to infinity of one half to the n minus one. And you notice that that's basically a geometric series. Um, now there's a, a tiny little issue with the n minus one. It's not a big deal at all. Um, you can actually just express this as n equals 0 to infinity of 1 half to the n to make it really look like a geometric series. And notice we've added uh, one additional factor of a half that shouldn't really be there. So I'll simply balance that with a 2 right here. So, um, so that would be equivalent to this statement above. Um, this clearly converges by the geometric series test excuse my abbreviation there, um, the geometric series test that says that a times r to the n converges when the r is less than 1 um, or greater than negative 1. So this converges by the geometric series test and since that was larger than our series then this guy must converge um, by the direct comparison test. So once you get more advanced um, and into more advanced type problems, you might use more than one test to show that a particular series converge. You might need a direct comparison test to relate it to a more uh, well-known uh, type of series, P-series, or in this case, geometric series, and then use that test to finish it off. Okay. Now, one thing I want to mention is you, you have to be really careful about your inequalities. And th this is my only beef with the direct comparison test. It's, uh, it's not really my favorite test. Uh, there's another comparison test called the limit comparison test. We'll have a video on that um, in your playlist. Um, I, I much prefer that comparison test to this one, and here's why. Look at a series like this. Um, and actually, I just noticed, let me start this at 2 instead of 1, just so I don't start off with division by 0, but that's that's not a, a huge deal starting it at 2. Um, I'm, I'm curious about the convergence of 1 over n cubed minus 1, that, that series there. Well, between me and you, again, I'm almost certain that this is going to converge um, because it roughly looks like 1 over n cubed, the p series. And so when you try to 
relate it to somebody um, that's larger than this term, well, we would want to say let's relate it to 1 over n cubed. But notice, because this is a minus 1, this inequality is in the wrong direction. This is actually larger than 1 over n cubed. But saying that a smaller series converges, if this was a series, that speaks nothing to the sum of the larger terms. It might converge, but not, not because of this. Uh, it might very well diverge. We, we don't really know. So if the inequality order doesn't work out, then uh, you're pretty much stuck or you have to keep looking. And uh, so hopefully you notice that subtle difference between the first problem and the last one. This one was a plus, so the inequality worked in the right order. This one was a minus, so it, it kind of didn't work. Um, now, if this had been the uh, limit comparison test, we would have been much better off. So I usually direct my students to comparison, sorry. Um, I usually direct my students to focus more on the limit comparison test than the direct comparison test. But nevertheless, the direct comparison test is good in the right situation.